Everywhere you look, you see people singing the praises of the Capital One Venture X. Some label it even the best credit card of 2022 and 2023. And it's no wonder why. On paper, it's a no-brainer because of the $300 travel credit and the 10,000 point anniversary bonus. All for a $395 annual fee that includes airport lounge access, Visa Infinite Concierge services, and important travel protections, and more. But keep in mind, this card has only been out for a couple of years, and so far it has not yet proven itself when it comes to long-term sustainability. If it truly is unsustainable, that upsets me for two reasons. First, having an unsustainable card could be a way of cornering the market which actually stifles competition and doesn't help it. Number two, people are buying into a card like this only to have the rug pulled from under them when the card benefits become unaffordable and they have to be cut. And that could have implications for all these people's credit scores. Bait and switch marketing at its finest. I'm not saying which it might be because I honestly don't know, but just know that an unsustainable card just isn't good for anyone. In today's video, Let's take a look at whether the Venture X is sustainable by looking at premium card offerings from its competitors. Before we get into that though, do me a favor and hit the like button down below, subscribe, and turn on notifications for the YouTube algorithm. I come out with videos periodically where I offer unique perspectives on cards that are typically overlooked, so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of that. Let's start off the video by going through the history of the City Prestige card that was closed to new applicants a couple years ago. This is a good case study to see what happens when a card gets too good for the bank and then benefits get cut. The City Prestige was released in 2010 to what we consider today to be pretty mediocre benefits for a $500 annual fee. It earned 1.3x on supermarkets, drugstores and gas stations, and 1x on everything else. It also earned 1 point per mile flown on flights booked through the travel portal or concierge service. Between 2010 and 2015, benefits were added and taken away. But let's talk about 2015, which Milestalk.com describes as the peak city prestige. The best the card would ever be, and a gold standard for premium credit cards on the market. Everything will just be downhill from here. At its peak, it earned 3x back on flights and hotels, 2x on entertainment and dining, and 1x on everything else. Pretty mediocre for today's standards, but keep in mind that was almost 10 years ago. It had a $250 credit for flights, priority pass, and unlimited fourth night free for hotels. That fourth night free benefit was the main selling point for everyone getting this card. There was also the golf benefit, allowing three rounds of golf per calendar year, run by a company called Golf Switch, saving hundreds and hundreds of dollars in green fees. There was also the ability to buy American Airlines flights in the thank you portal for 1.6 cents per point in value, and it came with American Airlines Admirals Club lounge access when flying American Airlines. Very similar to the way that the American Express Platinum comes with Delta Sky Club membership when flying Delta. All of this for now a $450 annual fee. It was only two years later in 2017 that the cuts began coming. Keep in mind, the Chase Sapphire Reserve was also just released, and that put a lot of pressure on the City Prestige as well. In 2017, the City Prestige lost the Admiral's Club access, the golf benefit, the 1.5 cent per point airfare redemptions, now 1.25 cents per point, and the 1.6 cents per point redemptions on American Airlines. So quite a lot to lose in the span of a single year. In that same year, however, they did change the dining, airfare, and travel bonus categories to earn 5x points per dollar, so maybe not a total loss. In 2019, Fourth Night Free got limited to just two uses per year and now needed to be booked through the website or the travel portal. Redemptions via the portal dropped even further to one cent per point, and the annual fee rose to $495 from $450. So basically a lot of the benefits that they had added in 2015 were just unaffordable by city and so they had to cut some of those benefits and even raise the annual fee. And I think this was the final nail in the coffin because this card was closed to new applicants in 2021. When a card gets too good to be true to gain market share, it becomes unsustainable long term. Then when you begin cutting benefits, customers get upset and cancel, people lose confidence in the card and so it gets less use 
which means less money to sustain benefits, which leads to cuts, which leads to less confidence, and so on and so forth. And this is the credit card death spiral that kills good credit card products. Let's take a look at the Chase Sapphire Reserve. This card has a $550 annual fee and $300 of credits that most people will use. This leaves a $250 annual fee with tons of benefits like airport lounge and restaurant access, insurance benefits, and great multipliers. However, this card does make you work a little bit to come out even with the annual fee. But if you know what you're doing, you can get outsized value for this annual fee. So why is the Chase Sapphire Reserve not unsustainable? The key is that this card and other Chase cards act as a gateway to their other more profitable accounts, like their checking, savings, and investment accounts. Basically, right when you open the mobile app, you get slammed with a bunch of promotions to open bank accounts with Chase. Depending on the demand for their banking products, Chase credit cards act more or less as loss leaders to bring customers in. For American Express, again, their annual fees are high, and they have convinced people to pay almost $850 in annual fees for an Amex trifecta. Besides that, Amex is both a bank and a payment processor. This means, unlike Chase and Capital One, they don't need to split processing fees with another company like Visa or MasterCard. Not only that, they also have other banks offering cards that use American Express as a processing network, like Macy's Amex card offered by Citibank or previously the Wells Fargo Propel card. Now, let's look at the Capital One Venture X. It has a $395 annual fee, but basically gives $400 in credits that are easy to use for the average person. All it takes is for the cardholder to go on a vacation once per year, and the credit will be used in full, resulting in a loss of $5 for Capital One on just the annual fee. Then we add in costs for insurance benefits, lounge access, purchase protections, and all the other costs of operating this credit card, and they're definitely coming out much further behind. Capital One is not a payment processor like American Express, and they use Visa Infinite for the Venture X, so they have to split interchange fees just like Chase does. However, it does not appear that they can use this card as a loss leader for their high margin banking products, since it doesn't appear that they have any. They have really good fee-free bank accounts with high interest rates, and they are comparatively a smaller bank than Chase. So what are they doing? Well, it seems like they are trying to use their travel portal to drive their profitability and sustainability. However, there is a problem with that. They will either have to overcharge you or lose money. Let's look at the recent change to the Capital One Travel Portal. For more information on that, see my video in the description below. Basically, for price matching, Capital One will only ever issue you a credit for future travel rather than a refund if you find a cheaper price elsewhere. What's more is that this requires a phone call to Capital One and a claim submission. From data points gathered around the credit card community, this is required pretty often. Additionally, there are many fine print reasons why they can deny your price match and they require you to book and pay first before you make the call. Meaning you won't know if you can get the price match until after you spend money. This means that Capital One could be purposefully marking up certain reservations in the travel portal to make up the difference for this card. They are hoping that the price matches are too inconvenient for most people and for those that want to, will find any reason to deny the claim. But since you must use the $300 in the travel portal, you have no choice but to use the travel portal. Therefore, your travel credit will likely not go as far as they promised you. So this is definitely, as it appears to me, a crooked practice of forcing people to use the travel portal. And if you wanna get a fair price, you have to use the portal again and again and again in an infinite loop. It's either that or they're not gonna make any money because they are already kicking most of their commission back to the cardholder in the form of rewards. And I don't think this strategy is sustainable because just like how they are banking on people on not calling in to get price matches, they are also banking on people to continually put up with calling in. And I don't think this is sustainable because just like how they are banking on people not calling in to get price matches, they are also banking on people to continually put up with calling in. That's counting on people to call and not call at the same time. It honestly sounds like a lose-lose. If people call in, they are kicking the refund down the road. And if people don't call, those people are just gonna cut their losses and go to a different travel portal or just book direct. And when people finally give up, this will lead to less money for Capital One, less money for benefits, 
and will lead to further nerfs, will lead to cancellations, which will lead to less money for Capital One. And don't mistake my creation of this video for being anti-Capital One. I criticize them because I want them to be better. I want competition because it forces Amex and Chase to keep up their A game for benefits and value. There's no way these thoughts haven't crossed the minds of anyone in charge at that company. And I want this car to do well so we can all continue to get free stuff. What are your thoughts? Let me know in the comments down below. If you like this video, I have other videos that you can check out using the link to my channel in the description down below. Until next time, see you all later.